So you probably already saw from the video title, I went to ChatGPT and asked it to come up with the ideal everyday carry setup. At first, it just gave me categories and general responses. I asked it to get a little bit more specific and recommend specific items for each category it recommended. And that is what we are talking about today. Gonna be going item by item for this AI generated EDC to see if it's any good and see how it compares to some of the EDC setups I've done in the past. Our first item was a wallet. It recommended the Bellroy card sleeve or the slim fold minimalist wallet. I ended up picking up the Bellroy card sleeve just because that is one of the most recommended wallets I've had on the channel for people asking me to check out and talk about. So that's what we've got here. I also have plans to check out the slim fold wallets at some point in the future for a future loadout. So stay tuned for that sometime, probably this year. But going over some of the specs for the Bellroy card sleeve, it says it holds two to eight cards. I think that would be pretty accurate here. Most wallet marketing materials will say it holds way more cards cards than it actually can in reality. I think this is actually pretty close. I think five or six would probably be an ideal max here, but you could definitely fit eight if you need it. I tried to do a bit of digging on the leather. They say it's an eco tanned leather made from premium hides. It feels a little too vague for my comfort. I couldn't find a lot of info on eco tanning versus like vegetable tanning or Chrome XL or anything like that, but the leather does feel nice. It's a pretty soft and supple leather. I got the stellar black version here. I love this texture on here. It feels really nice. The Stellar Black is in their dressed category, so I believe it does have some sort of coating on here according to their website. Very little specifics on the leathers here, but it does feel and smell pretty nice. It comes with a three-year warranty as well. Maybe some point in the future I will uh, reach out to Bellroy and have them elaborate a little bit more on the eco tanning process because there wasn't much info out there when I looked. Functionally, I'd say this is pretty solid. You have a slot on both sides here, and then you have a little pull tab to be able to access everything that you keep in this middle compartment. I think that's a pretty clever design overall. I have liked using it. I wouldn't say this is my all time favorite wallet compared to a few others I've tried. I'm a huge fan of the Chrome XL leather from the uh, Filson card holder wallet, as well as the Reform wallet that I've been talking about a ton over the past year. But this is a really solid contender. I'm liking it a lot more than I originally expected when I picked it up. All in all, really solid choice from the AI here. Next on the list was a phone, and it actually recommended an Apple iPhone 13 or a Samsung Galaxy S21 with an OtterBox Defender case. I felt like that was weirdly specific, and the way that they phrased that, it seemed like they only want the case on the Samsung and not the iPhone. But anyway, um, I didn't end up buying an iPhone 13 for this. I have the iPhone 14 Pro Max, close enough. Great, solid phone. I think any of those flagship phones are going to be excellent. Not gonna dwell too much on that. Next category in the list was keychains. This was a weird mix because it recommended a key organizer and then a couple of keychain multi-tools. So it doesn't seem to fully understand what keychain falls under. It had recommended a KeySmart Pro, the Gerber Shard, or a Leatherman Micra. Leatherman Micra and the Gerber Shard are both multi-tools and they have a multi-tool category coming up in a few. So I went with the one key organizer option here and that was was the KeySmart Pro. You've probably heard of KeySmart before. The KeySmart Pro actually has built-in tracking, so if you lose your keys, you can find it. They have a version for Tile, assumingly for Android phones, or they have one that works with Apple products with the Find My app. With the Pro functionality, this comes in at $50, which is the most expensive key organizer I have ever talked about or reviewed on the channel. And to sum it up, I really hate this thing. The build quality is so poor for a $50 price tag. It's the most expensive one I've ever talked about or reviewed on the channel. And it feels like something that should have come out of the dollar store. I understand a good portion of that $50 goes towards the tracking. You know, an Apple AirTag is $30. So that only leaves $20 left over for the keychain. But even with that, I would not consider this good quality for $20 even. I think this is like five or $10. The polycarbonate just feels like a really cheap plastic. They say it holds one to 14 keys, comes in right at one ounce or 28 grams and is four inches long. Uh, in addition to the obvious key organization and the tile tracking, you have a built-in flashlight. If you want to even call it that, this thing must be like two lumens. Um, it is the dimmest flashlight I've ever seen. And the terrible cherry on top of this thing is that it charges with micro USB. You know, that alone I can probably get past, but just the combination of everything, really poor build quality. You know, they advertise a flashlight that's kind of terrible. Micro USB charging, the fact that this thing is hideous and it's not very functional or nice to use. Um, all in all, this is terrible and I really, 
would never recommend anyone go out and buy this thing. You can get much better options for way less money. Um, Orbit Key makes some really great budget ones. The Active Series is like 20 bucks, I think, and is pretty solid. I'm a big fan of the Jibin Key organizers as well as another alternative. So this was a huge swing and a miss for the AI, but the next category, they have redeemed themselves quite a bit. Getting into the watch, they'd recommended a Casio G-Shock or a Seiko 5 or a Timex Weekender. I'm personally unfamiliar with this. Seiko. I wore Timex Weekender for several years back in the day and really did enjoy it, but I am a huge fan of G-Shock, so this was a full-on home run in my opinion, obviously extremely biased. But with uh, no specification as to which G-Shock, I went with kind of the default classic square. Uh, this is the GWM 5610. I actually already had this in my watch collection, so I didn't buy anything new for this video, for this category at least. But I love this watch. It's definitely a huge favorite for me. Uh, the retail price on it's $150, but they run sales on these all the time. I got mine last fall on a half off sale for $70. It's got solar charging, which is really great. And I think worth a little bit of a step up from the normal 5600s. And you do also have multiband, so it'll sync with the world, you know, atomic clock. You have all the great stuff with digital watches, you know, timers, stopwatches, alarms, everything like that. G-Shocks are obviously shock resistant you have 200 meters of water resistance the case size is right around like 43 or 44 millimeters it wears very small for that size when you hear it on paper it weighs just about 50 grams i think let me check my notes 52 grams uh, full resin on here Great watch, excellent watch, uh, full home run from the AI recommending a G-Shock. And I think if you're gonna have one G-Shock, you know, that classic Solar Square is a great way to go. Next category on the list was pens. It had recommended a Fisher Space pen, a Uniball Jetstream, or a Parker Jotter. Um, all three solid choices. I was really happy with these. I've used the Uniball Jet Streams for many years. Uh, my favorite one though seems to be discontinued. There was one that was a really nice thick inky writing style, but it dried really quickly, which was awesome for left-handed. I've heard a ton of recommendations for the Parker Jotter. I ended up going with the Fisher Space Pen though, just to save a bit of money. I spent several hundred dollars buying stuff for this, so I wanted to save where I could, and I actually haven't checked out the Fisher Space Pens before. I got the 400 series bullet pen, this this is the Cerakote Tungsten version. Uh, it was $36. There are a ton of variants for this. But all in all, I have been really happy with this. For $36, I think it's a great kind of in-between. I tend to favor some of the like titanium bolt action pens. Those are my favorite. Um, but this is going to be, you know, a pretty big step up from just, you know, buying pens at Staples or a grocery store or something. And uh, it's not going to quite break the bank like some of the $100 plus titanium pens on the market. Writes really well, uh, folds up really small. It was even smaller in person than I realized it was going to be. But then when you do fold this out, you know, it reaches pretty normal pen size and status. Uh, really good pick for for 36 bucks, I think you can't go wrong with this. I know a lot of people really love the Fisher Space Pens. I'm glad I finally was able to check it out. Next category was flashlights. It recommended the Olight i3T or a Phoenix E12 or the third one here was a Streamlight MicroStream. Never heard of Streamlight. I've heard of Phoenix and I've heard good things about that, but I actually had the Olight i3T already. So that is the option I went with. I'm not a huge flashlight guy. I have been growing more and more into it. I tend to to keep grabbing it when I'm leaving the house and definitely always use it when I'm around my office. But the i3T is an excellent flashlight for 20 bucks. It gets up to 180 lumens. It uses one AAA battery. I like that it has just a really nice simple tail switch on here. Nothing overly complicated with the use case. I like simple. I think this form factor is really nice too. It's you know not quite a like thin pen style, but it's also not bigger or thicker, you know, it's a good size to fit into a sling bag or something. Has a 16 hour runtime, comes in at nine centimeters long, comes in at 39 grams. Uh, definitely a solid pick. Let me know in the comments for any of these alternates too. If you have any use or experience with them, some of these I haven't heard of, and a lot of them I have heard of, but just haven't had the chance to try. So let me know, get a good discussion going in the comments about some of these alternatives to see if they're any good, because I'd be really curious about that. Moving on to the next category of multi-tools, they'd recommended a Leatherman Wave Plus, or a Gerber Suspension, or a Victorinox Swiss Army Knife. Have some experience with Victorinox. I love the uh, the little, I think it's a mini SD. I've got a couple of those that use it for backpack 
packing and stuff. Great little multi-tools, but I wanted to have like a proper fleshed out one for this video here. And I actually had the Wave Plus already. I haven't tried the Gerber suspension. Uh, let me know in the comments again if you have. I'd love to hear about it. But the Wave Plus is a long-standing favor of mine. I've had this for several years and I'm in an apartment, so I don't have a you know really thorough toolbox around here. I just don't have a ton of space for it. This thing gets used constantly around the house by both my wife and myself. Uh, I keep this on hand all the time in my office. Whenever I'm going out on video shoots too, it always comes with me and has always came in handy for a number of things. It's uh, 18 total tools. Uh, I know a few of those are always a little superfluous. I'm not gonna go over the entire tool list. But one thing I love about Leatherman, they're made in Portland, Oregon, which is where I live here. They have a 25 year warranty on all of their multi-tools, which is great. Comes in at 241 grams. It's four inches in length when it's closed. And yeah, this is just a really solid, dependent multi-tool for me. I know some people kind of crap on the multi-tool saying they're worse than all of their counterparts, but if you want something small, it's still going to be really effective. Um, yeah, I've been really happy with this for the several years I've had it now and definitely my most used multi-tool that I've ever owned. In addition to the multi-tool, it also recommended a pocket knife. I normally do one or the other. I know some folks will get really into it and have a fixed blade, have a folding blade, and have a multi-tool. Feels a little bit like, overkill to me, but it always depends on everyone's situation. I'm not going to hate on anyone else's everyday carry. But the options I gave for a pocket knife were the Kershaw Leak, the Benchmade Griptilian, or the Spyderco Delica 4. I already have a Benchmade bug out that I really like. It felt a little redundant to pick up the Griptilian for that. The Kershaw Leak looked nice, but I've gotten a ton of recommendations to check out Spyderco because I hadn't yet. Uh, so I picked out the Delica here. This is the lightweight version. They have a ton of different variants with this. I got the gray FRN scale. It's a VG10 steel drop point blade. The blade comes out to 2.9 inches. The total length comes out to 7.1 inches, I believe. And the total weight is really nice and light at 2.1 ounces or 70 grams. All in all, this is a solid knife. It came in at $85, which is kind of a weird in-between price point in my experience. You know, you kind of have that budget 50-ish dollar price point, and then you get into that 100 to 200 dollar range. Um, I have a lot of experience with both of those, but not a ton of experience in that middle ground. Performance wise, I've been really happy with this. I'm not a huge fan of the thumb opener here. I know that's kind of the quintessential Spider Co look. Um, and all in all, I'm just not a huge fan of the aesthetics. Uh, functionally though, really solid knife. I'd love to hear if you have any experience with the Griptilian. Is it that different from the Benchmade? I haven't looked into it that thoroughly, if I'm being honest. And I definitely haven't tried the Kershaw Leak either, so I'd love to hear about that if you have one. So we hit a bit of a snag with the next category, which was a handkerchief. It recommended two that aren't being made, as far as I could tell, digging online. It was the Kaufman Mercantile Japanese Cotton or the Huckberry Essentials Handkerchief. Uh, I couldn't find either of these, so I don't think they're making them anymore. So a little bit of a placeholder here. I put my favorite, which is the Vala Alta Linen Handkerchief. Um, been using these for about a year now, maybe even a little bit more at this point. They're great. 100% Irish linen. They dry quicker and they're a little bit softer and nicer than cotton. Uh, definitely a nice classy one. I picked up the black because we kind of accidentally ended up with a blackout EDC here. They have a ton of other colors though, but this was one uh, fail of the AI. You know, recommended two options that aren't being made anymore. Moving on from there, the next category was a water bottle, and it actually recommended a standard mouth hydro flask or a wide mouth Nalgene. I have a wide mouth hydro flask and a standard mouth Nalgene, so I have the opposites of what they recommended, but I figured it'd be close enough for the review so I didn't have to pick out a separate one that's going to be essentially the same thing. The uh, Hydro Flask I have here, it's the 32 ounce with the straw cap lid. Comes in at a full pound. It's 11 inches tall and it has a three and a half inch diameter. This thing is big. This thing is heavy. I will say for that weight and size, you know, you get a full liter of capacity here and the insulation does work really well. So I'll give it that. But this thing is just a little bit too bulky for my tastes these days. So with that in mind, I haven't carried it in quite some time and haven't recommended it in quite some time after finding some better alternatives like Lark 
or the uh, Nalgene bottle for some situations where I do really like having that. One thing I do really love about Hydro Flask though, you have a lifetime warranty. And even if you do use and abuse this thing, this thing has been dropped and carried for years and years and is still working perfectly fine. The insulation still works. So overall, really solid water bottle. It wouldn't be my first pick these days, but I definitely can't complain about a Hydro Flask in this list. That rounds off the last category of what it had recommended to me. Uh, the total price for this EDC setup that was recommended by ChatGPT, you know, minus the phone, of course, and minus the handkerchiefs because they didn't exist anymore, was $560. So this is definitely not a budget setup in the slightest. Uh, but it was kind of a weird mix with some high-end stuff and some low-end stuff. You know, compared to some of the others, I was kind of surprised to pick the i3T for a flashlight at $20 when it had some, you know, higher-end options here. But I'm a little bit impressed with this. I expected it to be a little bit worse than it ended up being. You know, a lot of this stuff I already owned, which was great. And a lot of this stuff is highly recommended. And I've been really happy using it and testing it. I think the biggest fail by far is that KeySmart. You know, this thing is awful. Stay far, far away from it. I'm sorry, key smart people, if you see this, but man, this thing feels like junk for 50 bucks. And then obviously it failed on the handkerchiefs as well because those are seemingly discontinued. Aside from the looming threats of AI, uh, this video was a ton of fun to set up and make. I hope you all really enjoyed it as well. No sponsors this week. You all sponsor by watching and supporting. So a huge thank you to all of you for that. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of this, uh, what you thought of the setup. Let me know if you have tried any of those alternative choices, uh, how they are. Uh, so I didn't have to buy every variant of everything it recommended here. Let's get that discussion going in the comments, but thank you again for watching and I'll see you next week.